Uh, let me begin by introducing myself. My name is Hanay Amin. I am an associate attorney at YG Trivedi and Company, a full-time intellectual property law firm based in India. I hope all of you are staying safe and healthy in these trying times. COVID-19 has changed our lives in a manner that no one foresaw. But it has also brought us closer through online video platforms and meetings like this, the World Intellectual Property Forum. So with that, I would first off begin by thanking World Intellectual Property Forum for giving me this opportunity of presenting and sharing my insight on a dynamic topic like intellectual property, its strategy and management in a corporate environment. And I'm even more honored to be sharing my insight with such distinguished and eminent speakers. So with that, I would like to begin my small talk on this wonderful topic. Uh, so as we all know, intellectual property is an indispensable asset in today's time, especially when companies are looking to maximize their profit and growth. Uh, I think it is safe to say that intellectual property like patents, trademarks, copyrights or designs in today's time are valued at par with any other real property that a company owns or not, not only just a company, but an individual as well. I think it is safe to say that uh, investing in intellectual property is like investing in any other property that an organization owns, primarily because of two reasons. A, it is an invaluable asset. And B, an organization or an individual can exploit that asset in a manner that can reap numerous benefits. However, that being said, uh, like any other property, intellectual property requires constant investment. And by constant investment, I mean that it must be put to use so that a company can gain value out of it. And how can one do that? By exploiting it in a manner that helps a company to reap maximum benefits out of its intellectual property rights. As a litigate, litigator and a legal practitioner, I have come across various instances in my daily practice at the firm where companies or uh, individuals have benefited by exploiting their intellectual property rights in a clever and a strategic manner. One common factor that I've seen is when uh, the top level management or the board of directors or the corporate management takes a proactive role in IP related decisions or matters, then the outcome is usually a positive one that helps the company in numerous ways. On the other hand, unfortunately, I have also seen companies lose on their rights or subsequently lose in litigation when the management or the corporate management does not take an active role in utilizing or exploiting the intellectual property or probably not being too serious about enforcing that intellectual property. So when talking about intellectual property, its strategization and management in a corporate environment, First off, I think it should be one of the most important agendas in any corporate meeting. It should be discussed among the corporate management and the top level management in order to utilize it in a manner that can help the company reap numerous benefits or benefits that go beyond monetary value as well. So when devising a strategy or a plan, in my opinion, the plan should involve an integration of all intellectual properties and not just a patent centric plan. Most of time, most of the times I've seen uh, companies uh, strategizing too much on patents and then at the same time they sort of do not give that equal weightage to other intellectual properties like trademarks or designs or copyrights or trade secrets. So when strategizing a plan or when devising a plan, uh, the management should take into account all intellectual properties, be it patents, trademarks, etc., because that will involve one, creating a competitive advantage, b, choosing a scope of strategy, and c, it will help in differentiating your products, it will help in branding, it will help in uh, effective brand protection, and it will also help in setting barriers against potential competitors or infringers. So give due weightage to each and every intellectual property. Further, um, when I talk of strategizing or devising an action plan, an intellectual property pl strategy plan and its subsequent success, in my opinion, depends on a lot, depends a lot on interdepartmental help, 
By interdepartmental health, I mean that all departments of the company must work together in a way that not only helps to protect IP, but generate, uh, uh, sorry, but it should, they should work in a manner that helps in monitor, monetizing that IP and generating value in the future. Uh, at, at YG3 Million Company, we have been around for 50 years and fortunately we've seen so many companies uh, litigating and trying to protect their intellectual property rights. So over these uh, years of experience and period of, ex of practice, what we've concluded is that when interdepartmental uh, communication or when all departments work together in a company, they, uh, it would help in proper and effective intellectual property management and protection. So to have a so wholesome strategy, all departments, in my opinion, must work in synchronization. Right from the company's R&D, that is the research and development department where all the intangible assets and assets of value are generated, to the protection of that intellectual property by the legal department. And finally, exploiting that intellectual property through enforcement lawyers, uh, brand specialists, and licensing professionals, etc. So you see these stages or these uh, bifurcations will help in an effective intellectual property strategization and management. So all departments must work uh, together and there must be synergy among all the departments for, uh, for an effective intellectual property plan to be in place. So, uh, if, so the, the uh, stages that I discussed or not stages actually, but uh, the criteria or the bifurcations that I discussed can mainly be categorized into a three-stage process. So the first would be generation of an intangible asset by research and development or through research and development and its team. The second step would involve protecting that int intangible asset by applying for uh, statutory protection. When I say that, I mean you need to apply for a patent. If it's an invention, you need to protect the brand name. If it's a trademark or if it's a slogan or its name. If you are protecting the aesthetical features or uh, just the look of it, then apply for a design registration. So, And the third and most important step, I think, is using it and exploiting it through the enforcement department to generate monetary value out of that asset. So it can be categorized in a three-stage process. So uh, while I was researching for this topic, um, I came across a wonderful research paper from uh, MIT. And uh, that paper was quite extensive and it helped me out a lot during this research. So uh, in that research, they quoted a survey where they had uh, interviewed marketing and promotional staff as well as the legal staff from big companies or MNCs. And the one common factor that they found was that the marketing and promotional staff, as well as the legal staff, they all agreed and accepted the necessity to work closely to have an effective IP strategy. And you know, that is true in some way or the other. Uh, in, I've seen it happen so many times during my practice at the firm uh, that whenever a company comes in with any grievances that they have or when they come, come in with any problem that uh, my so-and-so intellectual property right is being violated or is being infringed, it is usually, uh, I mean, sorry, that information usually comes in from the marketing team. So the marketing team informs the legal team about potential infringers and how the company's intellectual property rights are being violated or how they're being misused at the ground level or in the market. So that information can only be obtained from the marketing team. So I believe that the legal team and the marketing team should work together so that a synergy that is created between these two departments will almost always prove beneficial to an organization. And I've seen that in my practice. So I can safely say that whenever the marketing team and the legal team work together, uh, the, the results are, are usually beneficial for the company. Now that I've mentioned the MIT research paper, uh, having gone through that paper and research further on this topic, I believe it would be appropriate to quote a certain paragraph or a suggestion from that paper. 
uh, wherein they quoted five major intellectual property strategy scope and scopes. Um, they were suggested by the research paper and I, I felt it was relevant and worthy to mention here because those five steps, if were to be applied by any company, I believe personally that it would help in effective intellectual property management and strategy. So the first step or the scope was a full-fledged IP protection that involves protecting technical and non-technical intellectual property. And it, like I said in the beginning, it should, uh, the weightage to each intellectual property should be equal. You should not only be focusing on pattern, it should not be a pattern centric uh, plan only. So technical and non-technical IP should be protected and it should be sought for every possible minor invention in order to block the entire technology space, in order to block the entire marketplace to your advantage. The second scope involved patent and trademark control. So in addition to patents for core technology, trademark protected brands should also be registered for product differentiation, for product distinctiveness, and so that you can stand out in a crowded marketplace. The third scope involved trading the IP by licensing it or selling it. This again, excuse me, this again is a crucial aspect because it aims at creating large IP portfolios and actually improving or gaining benefit from your intellectual property if you were to license it or sell it. The fourth scope involved pure branding. So every potential product differentiation that you have must be trademarked and must be marketed extensively for it to stand out. And the fifth scope was to support core research and development. So patents, trademarks, and designs are supposed to protect products that build on substantially sophisticated inventions. Uh, so these five factors I found were really relevant and I thought it was important to quote them because they are quite, um, they're quite informative and even though they're not exhaustive, but I, I thought it was worthwhile, worthwhile to mention them because this, the, all these factors basically sum up how effective an IP strategy should be. So now keeping these factors in mind, let us circle back to what I stated in the beginning of this video, that uh, the board of directors or the top man level management or the corporate management should be actively involved in IP related decisions or should take an active involvement in IP related topics. This is very significant. So when I say this, how, how can the board or the top level management or the corporate management be actively involved in this? Uh, one example that I can think of, again, being a core litigator, is that the management or the board should also get involved and take an active role in IP litigations. As ultimately, it is the company's corporate reputation that is at stake. So by taking a proactive interest or by taking an active interest in ongoing IP litigations or any, or any ongoing IP matters for that fact uh, would ultimately prove beneficial because ultimately it is the company's image, the company's reputation that is at stake. Uh, so like I said, they must get involved and they should take an active role, not only in litigations, but all other matters. So, I think that probably is one key factor. Uh, but again, folks, you need to remember that there is no one size fit all principle for an effective IP strategy. But there is strong research and evidence uh, attached to it that shows that companies tend to do better at IP management when the top corporate management uh, renders their active involvement, not only active, but when the top management uh, is actively and genuinely involved in all IP related projects, then that is a major hit or a major success factor that drives IP performance. So um, all in all, during my research, during this topic, I most certainly have come to a conclusion that effective IP management in a corporate environment will require management attentions at all levels. It is a process that should involve top level management in IP process planning in order to obtain higher results. And of course, the top management should interact and should regularly take updates from senior IP executives or the IP team. And that would in turn lead 
a higher performance of the intellectual property rights. So um, my message to all the companies and um, any other any other corporate uh, leader or manager sitting here in this conference is that listen to your IP team, listen to your IP lawyers, listen to your IP attorneys, give them a seat at the table where all the core decisions are being taken because intellectual property should be one of the main agendas in any core meeting. So listen to your IP team and hear them out and um, devise a plan that works not only to the benefit of the company, but also to the benefit of the employees so that they uh, can uh, put in more efforts and can work towards strategizing a proper IP. So um, yeah, all in all, I think one key factor that I see is how can a company effectively manage and enhance its IP strategy is through active management, effective protection, and of course, by giving equal weightage to all intellectual property. Uh, so with that in mind and uh, leaving you all with further discussions, we have several other eminent speakers talking on this issue. So I believe I would like to give them uh, an opportunity to give their insight on it, which I'm sure uh, would help us look at a different, which, which would help us look at this topic from a different view. So I once again thank uh, the World Intellectual Property Forum for giving me this wonderful opportunity and I am really honored to be a part of this conference. So uh, yeah, I hope all of you have a wonderful session and I'm really looking forward to having a wonderful interactive session. So thank you everyone, stay safe and take care of all and take care of yourself. Thank you very much, bye.